So Shirley sent me a nasty looking inequality and the directions here said solve, uh, I think for X, it might have been a different letter, but I'm fairly certain these are the right numbers that Miss Shirley gave me. So uh, let's take a look here. First of all, notice that this looks a lot like an equation, ex in, except instead of an equal sign, I see an inequality sign. This particular inequality sign says less than or equal to. So we have the inequality 10 is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds times the quantity of 9 plus 12x. So there's actually a couple different ways that you can start when you solve this. I think it's interesting because my daughter, who's a calculus tutor, just did the same problem uh, right before me. She solved it a different way than I did. So if you're going about it a different way, don't worry. Let's see if we come to the same answer at the end. But this is what I'm going to do. I notice that this negative two-thirds here is shoved up against this parentheses. And so it is multiplying. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and multiply through that negative two-thirds. And remember that when you multiply uh, a number through a parentheses, it passes out. So I'm going to multiply that negative two-thirds to both the terms in the parentheses. And the really nice thing is you can use your TI30XS to do the um, multiplying by fractions if you want to, because I know a lot of us hate to multiply by fractions. So if I were to type this first part into my calculator, I would type the negative button, which looks like a minus sign in parentheses on our calculator, then 2, then the N over D button to pick up a fraction, then 3. Now careful, if your cursor is blinking inside of your fraction, you may need to arrow out of it before you type times 9. Uh, put that whole expression into your TI, and you'll find out that negative 2 thirds of 9 is actually negative 6. Uh, you would have to press enter, though, which is our equal sign. Now remember, this negative 2 thirds has to pass out twice to both the numbers. Your calculator cannot handle the uh, variable, the x, but it sure can do the number part for you. So again, we'll type in negative, then 2, then the n over d fraction button, then 3. So I got negative two-thirds in my calculator once again. Again, you may need to arrow out of your fraction if your cursor is blinking inside the denominator of your fraction, and then multiply by 12. Remember, I can't type the x in my calculator, just the 12. And if I were to get that, I would find out negative two-thirds of 12 is 8. But that wasn't just 12, or negative 8, I'm sorry. But that wasn't just 12, that was 12x. So I'll have negative 8x. Wonderful. So all I did was simplify the right-hand side of my equation. So nothing will happen to my inequality sign. And I've done nothing on the left-hand side, so my 10 stays. Now, I have um, no simplifying left to do on the left-hand side, no simplifying left to do on the right-hand side, so it's time to start solving. But a really good rule of thumb for inequalities is get your letter to the left-hand side. So I think that the next thing I'll do is I'm going to move this entire x term, this entire variable term. In order to move an entire variable term, you have to um, do the opposite of what that term is doing. This current 8x is subtracting, and so I'm going to add 8x. I'm going to do the opposite. The rule is I can do whatever I want when I'm solving equations or inequalities as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to add that 8x right on the other side of my inequality sign. And let's take a look at what happens. 10 and 8x are not like terms. They're not like terms. One's a plain old number and one's some number of x's. They can't add together. Best I can do is just write them next to each other with a plus sign in between to say those two things are adding. I haven't done anything to change my inequality sign, so it will stay. And then on the right-hand side, minusing 8x and adding 8x cancel, so all I'm left with is negative 6. Good, we're getting there, we're getting there. I've got my letter on the left now. Let's start moving my numbers over to the right. Remember when you're solving that you should work your order of operations, groupings, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction, you should work it backwards. So I'm going to move this 10, which is adding with 8x first, by subtracting it away. Now, of course, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides of my inequality, so I copy that minus 10 on the other side. 
Okay, on this side, what happens if you take 10 and subtract 10? Well, it zeroes out, and all I have left is positive 8x. Well, I'm too lazy to brag about a positive sign when I don't have to, so I'll just write 8x, and that's less than or equal to a negative 6 minus 10. Again, your GED calculator can handle this. You'll have to make sure you use a negative sign in front of your 6 and the regular minus sign in front of your 10. But I can do this one in my head because if I owe somebody $6 and then I go and borrow another $10 minus 10 again, I'm going to be in debt by quite a bit, $16. I'm borrowing money all over town. Great, I'm almost done. X is almost alone. I've got to get rid of this 8. Again, in order to um, get rid of something, you have to ask yourself what's happening right now. So this 8 and this X are shoved together like this. That means they're multiplying. So we'll do the opposite of that. The opposite of multiply is divide. I'm going to divide by 8. Since it's a change I made, I'm going to make it to both sides of the equation. Multiplying by 8 and dividing by 8 are opposites, so they cancel. My X is alone just like I wanted. I've done nothing to flip the inequality sign. It'll still be a less than or equal to and negative 16 divided by 8 is negative 2. So there is my final answer. X is less than or equal to negative 2. Uh, this is a great answer, but this isn't the only form this answer will come in. Could come in, I should say. This is the inequality form. But you may be asked to graph your answer on a number line. What would that look like? If you were asked to graph your answer on a number line, you'd have to start by drawing a number line. Looks like a double-headed arrow. You would have to make sure that the portion of the number line we were, looked at, were looking at contained the value negative 2 on it. So I don't really care what other numbers are on there as long as they're in a logical order. But there I've got negative 2. Okay. Because your symbol, the symbol less than or equal to, will tell you how to graph this. See how there's that equal to symbol, that flat line on the bottom? That tells me that negative 2 is an included value, that my answer could be negative 2. And so I'm going to make a nice solid dot here. Make sure your dot is colored in. That means that negative 2 is a possible included value. Now, I also have a less than symbol. It points off to the left, and that's exactly what you're going to do on your number line. You're going to scribble off to the left darkening the left-hand side of that dot and that left arrowhead. See how that arrowhead looks a lot like that less than symbol? And so this is two different ways here that I can show that x is less than or equal to negative 2 in an inequality or on a number line. Either one could show up on the GED. Great. Surely hope that makes sense to you and everybody else who's watching. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I will be happy to clear it up for you.